How's everybody doing today? Welcome back to the engine house. I am your host, uh, Gandy Dancer. Um, got a few things we're going to talk about today. Uh, <clears throat> one is buildings, and the other is making your own sculpt mold. Uh, I've got a few things here. These are, I picked up an entire box of these. There were like 14 in the box. Uh, these are Hawthorne, um, village, uh, Christmas buildings, and uh, most of them. And some of them are pretty close to O scale, and some of them are a little closer to HO scale. And I was going to show you here. Uh, here's two that I'll be working on next. This, of course, this was snow, and I added leaves per se with paint this will be getting um when i when i get it here it'll have the uh, flocking in the fall colors i'm more of a fall guy than a winter person and uh, the whole christmasy thing we won't get into that um anyway this building was uh quite bright similar to this one and this one this is a much smaller version and I decided to see if I could weather it some, dirty it up, and make it a little more realistic, per se, um, with some graying wood showing through the paint and dirty and, uh, and you know, looking a little less like a uh, Christmassy scene and a little more fall. I didn't take a picture of it to start with. I should have to show you what it looked like, but it, um, you know, bright colors similar to this uh, this is closer to O scale I think I have uh, oh one two three four uh, five that are close to O and the rest are a little closer to HO um, but they'll be sitting off in the background so it won't really be all that noticeable uh, this will be the next one I'm going to be working on as well as this one. Um, you can see there's something broken off here. It was probably a chimney. I will add something. These will get a coat of primer, and then they will get painted um, to look a little more, a little less like uh, this and a little more real, I hope. Um, and is this one, and it is, again, the door is not quite, it's more HO. Um, if you're somebody who uh, cares about being prototypical or everything has to be exactly to scale, this may not be the way you want to go. If you're somebody like me who is getting started into the hobby again after uh, quite a number of years, and like me on a fixed income, I picked up this whole box for like 20 bucks. Um, it's a good way to get buildings on your layout. And, you know, most of us can do a little paint. Um, they're going to be fall. Wherever the snow is on these is going to be leaves. Um, and some flocking, you know, some fall colors and whatnot. This one is fall colors already. Um, for the most part, I like this. And again, these have places where lights go. A lot of them do. This one does as well. This one, um, overall, I like the looks of it. I may do something with the logs and um, put uh, some acetate in here or something to more make it look more, you know, it's a, it's a window. Um, I may even put some detail stuff inside, so if you happen to see inside, you're going to see something besides just the back wall. This is a little closer to HO scale, but again, it's going to be off in the distance. Um, this is another fall one, and it's going to get some touch-up work. The uh, pumpkins and gourds in the back of the truck here and in this little wagon have all kind of pretty much faded. Um, you can't really tell 
um, what they are. There's a couple more back here. Also, the uh, fall leaves on the roof are way <laughs> too big. Um, and again, if you're somebody who is uh, into scale stuff, you know, you may not want to go this way. Um, I'm going to cover these up with the same flocking fall mix that I'm going to use on this. This is mostly like this so that when I put the fall mix on there, um, you're not just seeing black down below it. You're seeing this to make it, to give it some depth. Um, and you know, you can't grind this stuff off short of a, a diamond wheel. So I don't have any means of getting it off. I'm going to do what I can with it. And again, it's a cheap way to go. It's a cheap way for if you're getting into the hobby and you know, you're like, oh my God, you look at the prices of some of these buildings and you go, my God, I can't afford this. This is crazy. Um, you're right. It is. It's expensive. It's very expensive. Um, Menards has some buildings uh, that are pre-built and you can take them similar to this and, and you know you can you know, what I'm going to do with these only not maybe not quite so much you can put your own touches on them paint wise you can uh, you know paint them if you want to you can add more details if you want to um, but again they're also not cheap you're looking at some of them i think start start at like 60 bucks the smaller ones and they go up from there um woodland scenics has a few that are pre-built really nice one i would like to have that i will probably end up buying um later on is uh for any of those of you who are fans of the doors the uh, building is called morrison's doors let that sink in for a minute. Uh, somebody at Woodland Scenics, whoever designed that kit, had a sense of humor. <laughs> so um, just for that name alone, I'd like to have that kit, and I will put my own touches on it if I do buy one. Um, this is a smaller, again, saying this is closer to HO than O, but as a walking path, um, it's not a bad if it's in the background somewhere, it would make a good walking path. Um, these will get a coat of gray primer. That's what this got. And they will get painted. And where it's Christmassy, these wreaths will be more fall colors um, rather than Christmas. Uh, and I'm not a Christmas type person. I'm more of a, a fall, autumn kind of guy. Um, I prefer that over the cold and damp of winter. Um, this one, again, probably won't get much done to it. I may do something with the logs, and of course, I'll be putting Woodland Scenics or whatever the uh, a, a fall mix of, of leaves and foliage on these where it's at, and maybe even in a few other places. We'll see, and this will get some as well. Um, and the, the HO scale, or the stuff that's not quite the scale, will be in the background. Um, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, the other thing, um, I watched a video the other day from a kid, young guy, not a kid, a uh, younger guy. Um, he did his own uh, sculpt mold. He had five different methods using five different materials with plaster of Paris. To make sculpt a mold and uh, he rated them when he was done as to ease of use and uh, ease of making and the one that of course was number one in all cases was uh, he used these uh, these are egg cartons these are for five dozen eggs usually two of these come in a box and they're full of eggs of course my wife and I go through a lot of eggs. Uh, my wife uh, baking and whatnot, a lot of eggs. And regular egg cartons. And then of course you take that, rip them up and uh, put them in a blender. And one of the advantages with this method was um, you did not have to uh, 
put water in to grind these up whereas some of his other methods toilet paper newspaper there was a couple others i can't remember what they were now you actually had to put water in to get that to grind up and then you had to spread it all out and let it dry for a couple of days before you could mix it with the plaster of paris to add water to it and then it was just that's a lot of work okay and the one you it was the ease of use and ease of uh, making was the one with the egg cartons um i found a cheap blender at the same thrift store i got these buildings at three bucks for the blender it works um, the bottom half is over here on my workbench and uh i'm gonna make my own sculptor mold here in the next uh week or so i'll uh make some up real quick and so see how it turns out and i'll probably be shooting a video of it uh, uh of course i'm not going to show you grinding it because it's too damn loud um i'll grind it all up have the have the sculpt the mold ready to mix and i'll mix some and we'll put it on the layout and see how it is how it turns out uh, i'm not going to show you the layout i but puttered around on it a little bit but uh not enough to really change today i was talking about buildings and again we talk about expensive and whatnot and this is one way to go being on a budget i have to be very careful of where i spend my money and how much i uh one of the videos i showed you my ho version of gruesome cannery which was a kit bash that i'd done that uh I was going to have on my HO layout when I originally was going to do HO. <clears throat> I saw this online, Tool and Die. Absolutely fell in love with it. It's going to be the new O scale version of Gruesome Cannery. This has 26 pages of instructions right here. I don't know if you can read that, but there's 26 pages of instructions. It is a wooden kit. <clears throat> It'll be my first attempt at a wooden kit. Um, I got it, ordered it from this company here. If you can read that, woodenrailroad.com. I'm going to look at some of their other buildings. And I'm going to later, I, I treat myself. My layout's going to have a mixture of plastic bill, um, these ceramics and probably some wooden buildings on it as I go. Um, if you're into this for a prototypical and want everything exactly so, that's fine. I'm in this to have fun because uh, model railroading should be fun. I am uh, more into enjoying myself building things like this. Um, and working on things like this, painting them, trying to make them look a little more real, uh, things like this, uh, working on the locomotives, the tenders, the old post-war stuff, the cars and whatnot. To me, that's more fun. Uh, do I want to run some trains? Yeah. I have to finish laying some track before I can get going on running the trains. Um, and I'm getting there. There's a lot of other things most of us know. Life happens some of you work uh some like me um you know uh, we've got other things going on as well i can't often get down here and work on this like i'd like to one of the things i'm going to be getting before i even start on this and uh, i mentioned this <clears throat> excuse me uh jason jensen trains i've mentioned him in a couple of past videos has uh, used stains from besttrains.com. Uh, <clears throat> his favorite seems to be Murky Brown. Uh, he, <laughs> every time I watch one of his videos, it seems to be that's his go-to stain. And again, they are not cheap. Uh, the stains, this hobby is not a cheap hobby. So you have to space everything out if, as you as you can afford to do it. Um. Uh, little over six ounce bottle of stain is uh something like 17 bucks i think um i can't afford to buy a lot of those i'm gonna pick one or two that i like and order them um 
Jason Jensen at one time was showing how to take acrylic paints like these, um, watering them down and making a stain, which works. Um, you go through an awful lot of this paint though, and uh, as it is, and then he started moving to stain the uh, using best trains stains, and his it really is faster and it's a whole lot look the work is a whole lot nicer in my opinion um if you uh do anything with a micromark here i get a catalog every so often and uh, they have their own stains in here i'm uh, not gonna dig through there right now and find them but they do have stains very similar not the selection Best Trains has, but they do have some. And they also have uh, some wooden building kits back here in HO and O scale. You can get them either or, as well as some others. This is a good source of some tools, even though um, a lot of what they have is out of my price range. Um, it can be found elsewhere cheaper or used somewhere else. I still like some of their stuff. And they keep sending me a catalog. I think I ordered something from them a year ago or maybe two years ago. And they still send me catalogs. So one of these days I need to find something else to order. So I keep getting their catalog. <clears throat> you never know. I may order, find something else in there I like. Um, some of their tools are pretty specific to modeling. And uh, you can't get those just at a hardware store. And, you know, so I may find something in there that I absolutely have to have and order it. But uh, anyway, like I was saying, uh, you know, Jay, uh, you're, you can find stains. And if any of you have seen Jason Jensen's videos, he uses a lot of stain on these older, on these, on these building kits. And they turn out really nice. So I'm going to, this isn't going to get built anytime soon. It's going to be a while Till I can get um, the stain I want or the stains plural the other thing I'm gonna do is these windows and doors and door frames I'm gonna make put them on our copy machine and make a copy a paper copy exact sizes because um, again this is an expensive hobby uh, a lot of you have probably looked and seen what packages of things like pre-made windows and doors cost uh, for O scale, again, they're not cheap. You get a lot in a package, but they're still not that cheap. Um, if I can make my own with balsa wood or another similar wood, um, I will have at least a um, copy here to go by, so for scale to go by. And again, some things will be to scale. Um, only because, you know, I won't be so far out. Um, but uh, I'm not a real stickler on, on you know, I'm not a rivet counter. I, I would rather have fun with it because the hobby is supposed to be fun. But there are some things I will do just because, um, you know, I like the way it turns out better. Um, <clears throat> and again, this is something, this is a fast way to put some buildings on your layout. If you can find the ones made with resin rather than the ceramic ones, like they're harder to find. I have not found any yet. They're much easier to carve and uh, get rid of this stuff. Um, this, you need a diamond cutting wheel and you're not going to get this ground off. You're just going to make a mess. So I'm painting them up. These are going to get, like I said, these are going to get painted uh, a, a primer gray. And then from there, I will paint the colors I want. And then, of course, this wreath thing here that's Christmassy will get fall colors instead. And when I get the uh, stuff I'm going to put over this, the, uh, the flocking, they call it, uh, this will get the flocking as well as well as the others. I have some other buildings. Of course, most of them are wintery scenes. Uh, I think these two here are the only two that are fall. Um, so <clears throat> uh, the rest are winter. So I'm going to be doing what I can to make them look more fall. 
And it's a fast way to get buildings on your layout. And if you know how to paint and have some, you know, most of us who do this hobby can paint. Um, we can make them look any way we want. Uh, the, the trick is, in the, or the key is, is to have fun. Um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be the hobby. Anytime you work on a hobby, whether it's, you know, modeling or, uh, or um, uh, even video games, if that's your hobby is to play video games. If, um, if you're, you're constantly frustrated, it's not fun and you're going to give up on it sooner. Um, it should be fun regardless of what you're doing if it's a hobby you're doing to enjoy and to relax it should be fun i cannot stress that enough and for those of you who watched my last video um the the stress is what triggers the ptsd and there, i had a couple weeks prior <clears throat> that were really extremely stressful and it just kind of sent me in a downward spiral um, so one of the things I have found that helps, and I, I, it's, it, I, and I know it's not an instant, oh my God, you know, you, your brain doesn't go there. Or if it did, we'd all be cured. Those of us who have PTSD, I have to keep my brain active as active as I can on when it's, when times are not stressful and this is a way to do it. Painting these, figuring out these, um, you know, working on a wooden building, uh, <clears throat> anything, making sculpt a mold. I have to keep myself, my brain active and busy. Uh, an idle brain goes places where I don't want it to go. Um, stress, sadly, can make it go that way. It's just something that happens. Um, it took me a long time to crawl out of it. Um, I'm better um, until the next episode. Uh, so, you know, I do what I can. And uh, to me, this is fun. I don't care if it's not quite scale, okay? It's fun. That's what the hobby is all about, is fun. Um Again, if you're constantly, if, if you're not, if, if you're stressed about it and you're, you're not having fun, you're, you're constantly frustrated, um, it's not a hobby. A hobby is something you do to relax. It's something you do to, it's enjoyable, um, regardless of what it is. Model railroading, uh, model, building model cars, um, uh, building leg, Legos, um, you know, I, I see people build uh, there's a there's a guy with an old scale layout that's got legos on his layout um I, I, that's his thing i mean you know it makes him happy uh anything you do it's it's fun it's meant to be but this is a cheap way to get some buildings on your layout in a hurry um is what i'm trying to say anyway i'm probably babbling on uh, this is what happens so sometimes when you come out of one of these um, but look into something like this. If you're interested in putting some buildings on your layout, uh, if you're just getting into the hobby, you're on a fixed income and, uh, you know, or you just don't really, can't really justify the cost of some of these wooden buildings all the time. I and mean, you could spend a lot of money. Even some of the HO stuff isn't cheap out there. Uh, look at these, uh, Try your hand at it. Like I said, I wish I had taken a picture of this before I painted it, but I wanted to see if I could do something with it. Um, I'm happy with the way it turned out. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and tackle some of the others here uh, <clears throat> and figure out how to paint them up. And that's the other thing. If you're happy with it, that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what somebody else thinks. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what another rail, model railroader thinks. Um, if it makes you happy, that's all that matters. Um, it's your world. Enjoy it. Um, have fun. Uh, you know, that's the main thing. 
But this is a fast and easy way to put some buildings on your layout that's going to be cheap. Like I said, I think I paid 20 bucks for the whole box, and there's like 14 of them in there. <clears throat> and uh, so now I'm just having fun painting them up. And in the meantime, I'm going to make up some sculpt mold later on this week. Uh, and I'll, I won't show you the process because, again, it's a blender. It's going to be loud. But I, at once I have this, this ground up <clears throat> fine enough in there, uh, we'll go through the mixing with the Plaster of Paris process and the putting it on the layout um, process. I'll go through that. I'll actually uh, have my wife over my shoulder. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this, we've had some rain and this damp weather, my throat. I'll have my wife over my shoulder shooting as I put this stuff down on the layout um, where it's going to be on the mountains or in the river, uh, riverbed. Um, wherever I'm going to be using spray paint, I'm going to be putting sculpt mold between the foam and the paint. Most of you know that using spray paint on foam is not a good idea. The, uh, the, the foam does not fare well. Um, so anywhere where there's going to have to be spray paint used, there will be sculpt mold and also to sculpt some of the mountain and the foothills just to give it a little more texture rather than just looking at foam. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going to happen, but it takes time. I'm, uh, even though I'm retired, uh, I'm still pretty busy. Uh, I've been helping my wife. She's currently in the garage right now working on an antique wooden school desk, the kind with an inkwell. Uh, some of us that are of that generation remember those in school. The lid lifts up. They've got metal legs. Uh, it's a, the, the, the solid wood. Um, we found it in town at a at a at a sale uh got it for like 10 bucks and the wife wanted something in her craft room she could pound on for doing some bead work one of her other hobbies that she enjoys and we got it home and she suddenly decided she wanted to uh restain it so she, we've been out in the garage uh uh stripping the old stain off the wood and uh uh, uh patching old holes with uh, wood filler and I spent a couple of days um, taking the rust and the paint off of uh, one of the legs. I'm still working. The other leg is sitting out there right now with a bunch of uh, paint stripper on it. And um, I'm going to try to get the rest of the old paint and the, uh, the uh, rust off and then repaint it. So, you know, I'm doing that as well as this. And there's other things going on. So it's not something that, you know... I would love to do nothing more than to be down here in this train room every day. And I know a lot of us that are in this hobby think the same way, but some of us work. Um, some of us have other things that are going on, family, uh, family obligations. Um, speaking of which, uh, my son and his wife and family just moved up. Uh, she's a traveling CNA and they were in Indiana and they just moved near um, they're in the southern end of the state. Uh, I'll have my grandson here. My grandson really wants to get into model railroading. As a matter of fact, uh, we just uh, ordered him, uh, his dad, my son, and I just ordered him a couple of old post-war diesel electrics and some rolling stock to start his own. They'll be here um, my son wants to buy a house to have a permanent location. Uh, as a traveling CNA, his wife gets to go whenever, and they usually pay for her um, and the family to stay wherever it is they're going to stay. But he wants a permanent location to come back to. So once he gets a house with some extra room, uh, my grandson wants to start his own layout. In the meantime... Um, he's gonna, he's gonna, when he comes here to visit, he's gonna, uh, be able to use some of his stuff. And he likes doing this kind of thing too with me. Uh, he's gonna be learning how to do some more painting, <clears throat> excuse me, learning how to work on some of the older locomotives. So you may see him in a video. You won't see me, 
but you may see him. Um, I, I don't prefer to be in front of the camera myself. I prefer to be off to one side. I'm not the focus this is, so I prefer to be outside the, the, the frame for the most part. But you may see my grandson here in a couple of videos later on. Um, it's getting a little too close to the school year, so probably not until next summer, um, uh, you know, but he will be here and uh, you'll see him and me teaching him some of this stuff. So again, he's a youngster getting into the hobby um, and uh, that's the whole thing. I wanna make it fun for him. And I've told him the same thing. It's meant to be fun, it's your world. Uh, he wants to put Hot Wheels tracks on his train layout. I said, go for it. It's your world, do it. Um, now that may change, he's a, he's a young teen. Um, so it may change six times between now and when he actually gets a layout set up. But I'm not going to discourage him from having fun because that's, again, what this hobby is all about, fun. And I will try to find some of these for his layout when we get to that point. So anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, my last video, even to me, was a little depressing. So I was trying to make this one a little more lighthearted. But the last video, I thought that message needed to get out. Um, so that's why I shot that one. Uh, I don't normally want to do things like that, but um, being a veteran, it was important to me. So I hope most of you will understand. Uh, I will let you all go now. I hope you enjoyed this and stick around because uh, as soon as I get these primed and the primer dries, I will be sitting here painting on these and you'll will you'll see me going through the process like i said i did this one without taking a picture first i wanted to see if i could do something with it and i did so now these two are next anyway that's all for now have a great day bye for now